Good afternoon, everybody. And good afternoon, everybody, again. You're very welcome to the Awards for Excellence in Public Relations 2020, live from Dublin. An award ceremony like no other in the history of the Awards for Excellence, all 27 years of them, but all the more reason why we're delighted that we were able to gather everybody together today share good news and reasons for celebration. Celebration of excellence in the work that you do. And we're particularly delighted that we were able to do it on the day and at the time that you would have been gathering in the Mansion House. Usually on these days, we pray for sunny weather. Today, I'm sure you'll join me in praying that nobody freezes. And we're joined by a very large group today there's over 470 of you at last count. And a special hello to those joining us from New York. And also to those who sent lovely messages of, of support in the last few days. Now, I'm sure you've often heard at award ceremonies like these that everybody is a winner. Well, if you've been shortlisted for these awards, then I can tell you that is the case. Because the awards this year have been the most competitive yet. More organizations than ever before entered. 186 entries in all were submitted. More young people than ever before entered for the Young Communications Professional of the Year. So, if you're shortlisted, you have every reason to celebrate this evening. And we hope that you'll share those celebrations with us and with the PR community Use the hashtag PR Awards 20 and let us all join in the celebrations. Now, let me just explain what the running order will be for the next hour or so. In a moment, I'll introduce you to Nessa Kane Fine. Nessa is the chair of the judging panel. And then we'll be joined by Mario Leary, chairperson of the Public Relations Consultants Association, and Port McKeown. President of the Public Relations Institute of Ireland. Mary and Porik will take turns in announcing the shortlist for each of the categories and then the winners. And along the way, we'll be joined by our sponsors. And we are very appreciative of their support. They are Cantar, Rootpoint Media and Fennel Photography. We really do appreciate the support. So, I believe the appropriate phrase now is, it's showtime. I'm going to hand you over to Nessa Kane Fine. Good afternoon, everybody. It is great that so many of you could join us today. Um, I know that you want to get to the important part of our afternoon and find out who has won. So I am not going to delay you but I do want to make a couple of mentions. Um, it is important that, um, you know, that you all know that the Awards for Excellence would not happen without the enormous efforts of a few key people. And we are extremely grateful to the team that make these awards possible. So firstly, Anya Sheehan from the PRII, who coordinates, coordinates the awards every year. She has yet again done a tremendous job, and in fact, a seamless job this year, despite the upheaval that COVID-19 presented to us. Um, our new awards invigilator is Sheila Gahan, and Sheila tirelessly analyzed every single entry to the last detail and briefed the judges. This was Sheila's first year, she was an absolute professional. She also did a seamless job, whereby it was not at all apparent that she was new to the team. So thank you very much, Sheila. Finally, our panel of judges. Every year, the 12 judges put enormous personal time and effort into studying all of the entries and determining the winners. This year was no exception, but it was more challenging because we met via Zoom rather than down in Merrion Square. Each of the judges yet again delivered the highest standards that we have become so used to, but that we should not take for granted. Being an awards judge really is a serious task. Each judge spends at least two to three days studying the entries and attending the adjudication panel meetings. 
So I want to extend a huge and sincere thank you to our judges who are Celine Crawford, Michael Cullen, Krishna D, Frank Dillon, Sheena Friel, Andy Green, Kevin Hora, Jeff Lyons, Podrick McKeown, Neave O'Carroll and Florence White. Thank you all. Now, you're probably wondering what the judges actually thought of this year's entries. Um, so quick overview before we go into the announcement of winners. Overall, we were impressed not only with the quality, um, but also with the greater number of organizations that entered this year. It really was an energetic competition, and it was very interesting to see so many in-house teams entering from across all sectors. Some of the stronger entries set clear objectives and reported in detail on the outcomes of their campaigns and how public relations activity impacted organisational and business goals, rather than just focusing on media coverage that was generated. Overall, many entries conveyed this stronger sense of the role of public relations in business and organizational goals and results. And that was great to see because we as public relations professionals need to be thinking and operating at a strategic level and informing business decisions and outcomes. So another very positive aspect of this year's entries was that fewer than ever quoted advertising value equivalents than previous years. This was an absolute relief to all the judges, I can tell you. So thank you. And let's see less and less and less or even no AVEs going forward, please. Um, of course, we will hold an applicant workshop later this year. So do join us then to hear all of the learnings from the 2020 awards. The applicant workshop helps you to improve your future entries. So keep an eye on the Tuesday Digest for information towards the end of this year. But back to today, as Martina said, getting this year this far is fantastic. So well done to all of you who have been shortlisted and hearty congratulations to the winners. I hope you all celebrate your success and enjoy this afternoon. Thank you so much, Martina. Thank you, Nessa. And thank you, Nessa, for the many hours and indeed days that you spend supporting the judging panel and leading them. So thank you for that. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Mario Leary, Chairperson of the Public Relations Consultants Association. Thanks, Martina. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, firstly, I want to congratulate Martina and the team at 84 Merrion Square for hosting today's virtual award ceremony. And to Nessa and all of the judges, for their commitment to judging all of the entries for the, on, for the awards online this year. On a recent international PR industry virtual meeting for ECO, the theme of a period of massive disruption was a common thread across all the representative PR agency bodies from all over the world. All of the countries present spoke of their experience of the rapid evolution of technology over the past three years, and all acknowledged how it has fundamentally created new rules of engagement. Online has become the norm for both internal and external communications, from client meetings and pitches to conferences and webinars, and of course for hosting virtual events like these here today. Technology has opened wider possibilities in terms of flexible and remote working and expanded access to a broader talent pool. There was general agreement at that meeting that remote working is proving successful and will be integrated into work practices for the foreseeable future. On the flip side, it was seen that, uh, it was seen that uh, the overheads of uh, city centre offices and high rents is going to be a problem moving forward. Another development brought into sharp focus across the globe during the pandemic is the importance of organisations and brands having a strategic purpose. And this purpose being integrated into the fabric of everything they do. The mental health and well-being of employees was another strong theme and there was consensus that employees well-being is and will be paramount particularly for those who have experienced deaths and stress caused by the coronavirus so what will the impact be on the pr sector in ireland in the post covid 19 world it's undoubtedly been a very tough time for both the industry here and internationally the PR and communications sector has experienced major disruption across agencies, consultancies and media platforms. We know that the event management business has been the most directly and heavily hit. However, areas such as public affairs, corporate affairs and internal communications have been very busy. And one would hope 
that as Ireland emerges from lockdown, our pent up demand for hospitality, social sport and other cultural events will create a lot of business opportunities. The PR sector research study for 2020 is currently underway and it will be very interesting to see the findings later this summer. This research is carried out every two years among and for PRCA members and it captures and tracks among other, th other things the financial health of the industry and it has been doing so for over 12 years. It could certainly be argued that public relations has experienced a coming of age in terms of the acknowledgement that good communications is not just business critical but life-saving and that communication professionals have proven their value in the boardroom. Resilience has persisted and innovation has shone through We've seen organizations pivot and support public information campaigns, and now helping the economy to reopen. Public relations professionals are integral to the work that's been done. So it's with a note of optimism, I look forward to the 2021 awards, when we will get to see some of these innovative initiatives feature among the nominees for next year's awards. But back to today, we're here to honor the 2020 finalists and the winners, and that's what we're going to do. I'm now going to hand over to Porik McKeown, president of the PRII. Before we start the formal proceedings, I'd like just to reflect briefly on the wider context for the awards. Um, it is, of course, about celebrating success, but more importantly, it's about demonstrating excellence. It's about setting out what best practice looks like to inform our own thinking, but also to share with those that employ and buy that expertise, our employers and our clients. And it's an opportunity to showcase what communications can contribute to the prospects for success of those of us that, those that work with us. Um, and the campaigns that we're celebrating today should be a benchmark for what we do. Now, every year we see new ideas and new approaches. So when the celebrations are over, please do take the time to visit the PRCA website where all of the winning campaigns for these awards are published, not just this year's, but going back through the years. They provide a frame of reference for what's possible and what we should all be striving to achieve in our work. So thank you again to all who've entered for that excellent work in the first place and for taking the time to contribute to and participate in these awards, which have a value for everybody working in public relations. Thank you, and I'll hand you back to Mary. Okay, thank you, Porik, and you're very welcome. <laughs> Glad you made it in the end. Okay, so let's get started with the presentations of the 2020 Awards for Excellence in Public Relations. Porik and I will take turns to announce the winners, and we will list the shortlisted entries first, and then announce the winner in each category, along with a brief citation from the judges. And of course, although the winners can't join us on stage, they'll receive their trophy, like this one I have here. Uh, and we'll call out the names of the individuals responsible for the winning projects, and we know that they're going to celebrate in style tonight. So moving on to the first category, and it's the best public affairs campaign. And here the judges felt that one entry stood out as the winner. It was, they said, a very well-deserved and thoroughly executed public affairs campaign to reverse cuts to the community pharma sector, both nationally and regionally, with clear objectives and impressive results. The winner, it's popped up here, the winner of the best public affairs campaign is Support Pharmacy by MKC Communications and the Irish Pharmacy Union. Congratulations to MKC Communications and Jim Curran, Director of Communications and Strategy, Irish, Phar Irish Pharmacy Union. The next category is Best Consumer Public Relations Campaign. And within this category, there are three divisions, depending on the budget, the size of the budget. As always, there was a hotly contested category with over 20 entries received. The first group judge was Best Consumer Public Relations Campaign with a budget of 20,000 euro or less. And we have three shortlisted entries. A Story of Irish Whiskey by Edelman and Irish Distillers. Go Madbury for Cadbury, entered by Fleischmann, Hilliard and Cadbury. And Whispering Angel, half price for 48 hours at Supervalue by Fleischmann, Hilliard and Supervalue. In assessing the strong shortlists, the judge, judges found that the winner was a very well-targeted campaign, successfully combining a carefully chosen authentic influencer with a good use of product data to reach a defined audience and ensure a strong sales results a wine for Valentine's Day. The winner of the best consumer public relations campaign with a budget of 20,000 euro or less is Whispering Angel half price for 48 hours at Supervalue. 
Congratulations to Megan Graham, Senior Client Executive, Fleischmann Hilliard, and Yvonne, uh, and Assistant PR Manager, sorry, Yvonne O'Brien, Assistant PR Manager in SuperValue. My apologies there. The next category is Best Consumer Public Relations Campaign with a budget of 20,000 to 50,000 euro. And here, two entries made the shortlist. They are Clonakilty welcomes a new vegetable pudding to the family by Jenna Smith Communications and the Clonakilty Food Company. And Leon, launching the naturally fast food brand to Ireland, entered by Legacy, Legacy Communications and Leon. The judges were unanimous in their choice of the winner, a clever, fun, hard-working campaign that carefully chose a selection of public relations techniques to successfully promote a brand extension. The winner is Clonakilty welcomes a new vegetable pudding to the family. And the award goes to Gemma Smith, Managing Director, Gemma Smith Communications, and Neve Garvey, Marketing Manager, Clonakilty Food Company. The last of the consumer PR categories is for the best consumer public relations campaign with a budget of over 50,000 euro, where three entries were shortlisted by the judges. Driving Health Literacy in Irish Adults by Drury, Drury Porto Novelli and Irish Life. We've come a long way by Yego for Tourism Northern Ireland and the launch of Centre Parks, Longford Forest, entered by Teneo and Centre Parks. Here the judges were impressed by a campaign based on clear insight that recognised the challenges of perceptions and attitudes. It also encouraged a call to action with impressive storytelling to create a compelling narrative across multiple channels. The winner of the best consumer public relations campaign with a budget of over 50,000 euro is, we've come a long way and we're pleased to present the award to Fiona Hannan, Director of Yego, and Fiona Cunningham, ROI Market Manager, Tourism Northern Ireland. Moving on to the best use of media relations category that at 26 attracted the highest number of entries of any category. There were four shortlisted campaigns in what was a very competitive category. Rebuilding Trust, One Device at a Time, executed by 150 Bond for HTC Exodus. Collector Coins are back in town, entered by the Central Bank of Ireland. And Dublin Bus, Give It a Spin campaign by Conway Communications in Dublin Bus and Uncovering Nutritious Truths by Wilson Hartnell for Safe Food. After much discussion, the judges agreed that the winner had a very considered campaign that was very well planned, delivered at low cost, exceeded targets, and achieved impressive results, not least with the coin commemorating Phil Linnett of Thin Lizzy and the Boys Are Back in Town fame. The winner is Collector Coins Are Back in Town from the Central Bank. We're delighted to pre present the Best Use of Media Relations Award to Sonia Felton, Media Relations and Parliamentary Affairs Manager, Central Bank of Ireland. I'm going to hand over to you, Porik, now. Thank you, Murray, and uh, great, great entry so far. So, an increasingly popular category is the best use of digital PR, including content creation, where three entries were shortlisted. The Animated Explainer Series by the Central Bank of Ireland. Style of Play, entered by Legacy Communications and Littlewoods Ireland and Rockshore, The Great Mate Escape by Wilson Hartnell for Diageo Ireland. The winner is a project that the judges agreed had clear objectives to build a digital presence for a GAA sponsor with clear metrics for success and content that made the sponsor relevant and engaging to its target market. The winning campaign is Littlewoods Ireland, Style of Play, and the award goes to Emer Breen, Legacy Communications, and Pippa Doyle of Littlewoods Ireland. Our next category is Best Public Information Campaign, where the judges have shortlisted three entries from a broad range of campaigns. These are Drone Safely, a campaign by Car Communications and the Irish Aviation Authority. National Fostering Week by Tuzla, the Child and Family Agency. And Call It Out by We the People for the Transgender Equality Network Ireland and the University of Limerick Hate and Hostility Research Group. The judges' citation for the winner refers to well-defined audiences and focused objectives in forming an integrated campaign that includes a range of tactics and testimonials and resonated with target audiences to achieve the objective of recruiting more foster carers. 
The winner is National Fostering Week and the award recipient is John Lawrence, Senior Communications Officer at Tuzla. The next award category is that of, oh, sorry, my script has moved too quickly. The next award category, apologies, is uh, that of the best public sector or civil service campaign. This has two shortlisted entries. Your library, take a closer look, by the Local Government Manage Ag Management Agency, and Seafest 2019, entered by Springboard PR and Marketing, together with Cork City Council and the Interdepartmental Marine Coordination Group. The choice of a winner was unanimous. The judges noted that a very considered campaign that was well planned, delivered at a low cost and achieved impressive results. The winner is your library, take a closer look, and we're delighted to present the award to Bridget Fitzgerald, Communications Manager of the Local Government Management Agency. In our next category, Best Internal Communications, the judges have shortlisted three entries. They are Bringing Our Vision for the Future to Life for Our Employees by Bus Aaron, the 3S Formula for Building a Blaze on Diversity and Inclusion by Ervia, and the launch of RSA's online benefits platform, Your Benefits, by RSA Insurance Ireland. The judges were unanimous in their decision as to the winning entry. They described it as a cost-effective and highly successful solution to inclusive employee engagement where the majority of employees are not desk-based and work across multiple sites. They also noted the campaign's success was achieved through whole organization buy-in and has the potential to be an exemplar for other similar organizations. The 2020 winner for best internal communications is Bus Aaron for bringing our vision for the future to life for our employees. And the award is presented to Tanya Waldron, head of internal communications at Bus Aaron. There are two sections in the next category where the judges assessed entries for best communications campaign by a charity, a not-for-profit or a non-governmental organization. For the best campaign by a registered charity, there are three entries shortlisted. Asthma Awareness Week 2019, entered by the Asthma Society of Ireland, Boots and GSK. The shop that nearly wasn't, entered by ETC, the Events Tourism and Communications Agency, and Breakthrough Cancer Research. And Throkera's War is Over campaign, entered by Throkera. Here, the judges felt that the winner was one of the most creative campaigns for a charity in a long time, a campaign that involved a lot of energy and effort to generate impressive results and cut through at a busy time of year. Showcasing the creative contribution of cancer survivors, the winner is best, communica uh, best communications category by a charity was the shop that nearly wasn't. And the award goes to Neve Murphy, Managing Director, and Maria Rolston, Account Manager of ETC, and Orla Dolan, CEO of Breakthrough Cancer Research. In the best communications campaign by a not-for-profit organization or NGO, again, three entries were shortlisted. A Dog is Her Life, Not Just for Christmas, entered by Dogs Trust Ireland, or CSI Discover, entered by the Royal College of Surgeons Ireland, University of Medicine and Health Sciences, and Call It Out, by We The People with the Transgender Equality Network Ireland and University of Limerick Hate and Hostility Research Group. The winning campaign was described by the judges as a strategic, well-rounded and targeted campaign that clearly articulated a specific message over a sustained period to reach existing and new audiences while reinforcing the essence of the organisation. The winner of the best communications campaign by a not-for-profit organisation or NGO is A Dog Is For Life, Not Just For Christmas. And we're pleased to present the award to Kira Byrne, PR and Communications Manager, and Kerry Sullivan, PR and Communications Administration, Dogs Trust Ireland. We're now moving on to the awards for best corporate communication, where there are three separate categories of activity. The first of these is best campaign in support of organizational values, where the judges considered a large number of worthy entries to arrive at a short list of three campaigns. LinkedIn, Fertility at Work, entered by Edelman and LinkedIn. Super Value and As I Am, Making Ireland Autism Friendly, entered by Fleshman Hilliard and Super Value. An Address Point from Unpost, entered by the Reputations Agency and Unpost. 
the judges selected the winner as a standout initiative with worldwide recognition that addresses real life issues for the homeless in a collaborative manner to effect change. And that winner is a dress point from Unpost. The award goes to Catherine Walsh, head of CSR, the Reputations Agency, and Anna McHugh, head of corporate communications at Unpost. Now, Mary, I'll take a break and I'll hand back to you. Thanks, Forrick. The next category is for best corporate campaign, where the three entries shortlisted by the judges are Feeding the National Conversation, Deliveroo in Ireland by Hume Brophy for Deliveroo. Pfizer celebrates 50 years in Ireland, entered by Pfizer Healthcare Ireland. And RCSI Discover, entered by Royal College of Surgeons Ireland, University of Medicine and Health Services. The winning entry was described by the judges as a solid campaign with clear metrics that brought academics on board and translated academic output into broader public consciousness to create strong brand awareness. The 2020 award for the best corporate campaign goes to RCSI Discover and the recipient is Paula Curtin, Communications Manager, RCSI University of Medicines and Health Services. Our final corporate communication category is for the best B2B campaign, and here we have two shortlisted entries. Making Aaron Moore the most connected island in the world, entered by Drury Portonovelli and Three Ireland. And Building the Jacobs brand in Ireland, entered by Edelman and Jacobs. The winner was selected as an outstanding example of a corporate story well told, where the agency worked to get to know their client and identify opportunities to devise and deliver a winning integrated B2B campaign. The award for the best B2B campaign goes to Building the Jacobs Brand in Ireland. Congratulations to David Callaghan, Director Edelman, and Kim Corbin, Director Communications, Marketing and Brand, Jacobs. Our next category is Best Healthcare Campaign, a specialism within public relations. Three entries have been shortlisted by the judges as follows. Don't Ignore the Signs of Heart Failure by Edelman and the Irish Health Heart Foundation. Switch on to Immunotherapy, Immunotherapy Patient Education, entered by Gleishman Hilliard and Roche Products Ireland Limited. And Grounded, Growing Conversations Around Mental Illness, by Wilson Hartnell and Janssen Sciences Ireland. The judges were unanimous and described the winning entry as a very well planned and executed campaign that engaged the target audiences and benefited from having a well respected personality at the heart of it. The winner of the best healthcare campaign is Don't Ignore the Signs of Heart Failure. And we're pleased to present the award to Lorraine Cronin, Associate Director Edelman, and Ruth McCourt, Marketing and Communications Manager of the Irish Heart Foundation. Just one second, I'd say. The next up is the best use of sponsorship category, and we have two subcategories one for budgets of €50,000 or less, and the other for budgets of €50,000 and more. So first to the best sponsor with a PR budget of under 50,000. The judges selected three shortlisted entries here. Aviva, Pride, Save to Dream, entered by Aviva. The Festival Running, entered by Galvin Sports Management and Irish Life Health. And Guinness Rainbow Gates by Wilson Hartnell for Diageo Ireland. This was another unanimous decision by the judges. They voted a winner based on a campaign that utilised an iconic brand asset to support an LGBT plus rugby sponsorship. They were impressed by the simplicity of the idea and the impressive results achieved within a limited budget within a short time frame. Guinness Rainbow Gates is the winner and the award goes to Kate Fitzgerald, Associate Director Wilson Hartnell and Neve Commons, Culture and Entertainment Manager, Diageo Ireland. In the best sponsorship with a PR budget of over 50,000 euro, the three shortlisted entries are Chadwick's Kit Out Competition, entered by Taneo and Chadwick Group, Vodafone and Irish Rugby, Everyone's In, entered by Taneo and Vodafone Ireland, and Leveraging GAA to Grow Brand Love, entered by Wilson Hartnell and Electric Ireland. The winning entry was chosen by the judges as a creative campaign with excellent storytelling that sought to grow the game beyond sport to reach, connect and engage. The award for best sponsorship with PR budget of over 50,000 euro 
goes to Vodafone and Irish Rugby for everyone in. And we're pleased to present it to Ross Murphy, Senior Associate, a consultant with Teneo, and Claude O'Hagan, Corporate Affairs Lead, Vodafone Ireland. And over to you, Porig. Thank you, Mary. So the next award we have is for the best public relations event. Um, so the, the best public relations, um, is not, sorry, uh, from a long list, uh, we have shortlisted four. The first is Work Equal Conference, Practical Steps to Workplace Equality, entered by Alice PR and Events and Dress for Success Dublin. The Vienna Model, Housing for the 21st Century, entered by Lionlight Communications and Dublin City Council Housing and Community Services. Jemison Black Barrel Discovery by 10AO for Irish Distillers, and Guinness 232 Degrees entered by Whistle Hartnell and Guinness Ireland. In the words of the judging panel, the winning event was an insightful and creative event that succeeded in achieving a broad range of objectives. It was empowering and created the, good way, the groundwork for deeper and ongoing engagement. The Work Equal Conference, Practical Steps to Workplace Equality is the winner of the Best Public Relations Event Award for 2020, and we're delighted to present to Martina Quinn, Managing Director of Alice PR and Events, and Sonia Lennon, Founder of Dress for Success, Dublin. The next category is public relations events, relations for an event. And here the judges had much discussion about the criteria for PR and support an event or a series of events. In the end, two campaigns were shortlisted. Summer Lovin' at Newbridge Silverware, entered by Teneo and Newbridge Silverware, and Taste the Island by Wilson Hartnell for Falch Ireland. In their citation, the judges said, this category took on a hidden Irish treasure and devised a solid strategy that was executed in great detail to deliver strong, measurable results. And the award for best public relations for an event goes to Taste the Island, and the award goes to Shane Lennon, account director of Wilson Hartnell, and Cuivany Devine, marketing manager from Fulge Ireland. The next award we come to is the best issues-led campaign, which is sponsored by Rootpoint Media. Afternoon, everyone. I'm Laura Gunnery, Head of Sales and Marketing at Rootpoint Media. Firstly, I'd like to say how delighted we are that these awards have gone ahead. As media intelligence partners, to many of you tuning in today, we see firsthand the contribution this industry makes to Irish society. We feel it's so important to have this work recognised and it's a credit to the PRII that this afternoon's event has taken place. Although I have to say my sitting room doesn't quite match up to the usual glamour of the mansion house. For the second year running, Rootpoint Media are proud sponsors of the award for best issues led campaign. Driving issue awareness and education can present some of the toughest challenges in communications. All of today's finalists have created compelling campaigns. They've tackled difficult issues that society doesn't always want to see or hear. Each finalist is truly a winner in their own right. But of course, there can only be one. So without further delay, let's find out who the winner is. Thank you. So we have, uh, um, so excuse me, from a broad range of entries, four issues led campaigns have been shortlisted by the judges. LinkedIn, Fertility at Work Week, entered by Edelman and LinkedIn. Vodafone Foundation, Ireland, Domestic Abuse is an Issue for Everyone, entered by Reputation Inc. and Vodafone Ireland. Address Point from Unpost by the Reputations Agency and Unpost. And the Abusive Teller Machine, AIB, Vulnerable Customers and Women, entered by Wilson Hartnell and AIB. The winning campaign tackled an issue that is often hidden in the workplace in a highly sensitive and effective manner. So the award for Best Issues-Led Campaign sponsored by Rootpoint Media, goes to LinkedIn Fertility Head Work and to Pierce Kelly, Senior Director of Edelman, and Lisa Finnegan, Senior HR Director of LinkedIn. Our next category is the, best, is the award for the best long-term campaign. Now, this is just the second year this category was included, and there was an impressive number of entries from which the judges have selected a short list of three. They are pointy, from Startup to Global Success, entered by 150 Bond and Pointy. 19 years of bringing a good fight to a bad cancer by Drury Porto Novelli for the Esophageal Cancer Fund. And securing permission for Aldi's future, entered by Gibney Communications and Aldi Ireland. 
The winner was described by the judges as a very hardworking and effective campaign over four years to grow and internationalize a tech device that helps retailers attract shoppers into their bricks and mortar stores. Its success just shows how an Irish agency can be at the forefront of international public relations. And the winner of the best long-term campaign is pointy from startup to success. And congratulations to Mark O'Toole, Director 150 Bond, and Mark Cummins, CEO of Pointy. We now move on to a new category for the 2020 awards. And this is the award for the in-house PR team of the year. It's the first time we've had this category. It has already proved very popular and the category is sponsored by Fennel Photography. Hi guys, Chris here from Fennel Photography. Now I know the awards aren't black tie, but I just thought I'd make the effort, but who actually knows I'm wearing full black tie or not? And we are delighted once again to support this year's Excellence in PR Awards. It's great to see so many friends and colleagues nominated for their work. And this year, we see the new introduction of the new in-house PR team of the year. The awards will recognize two public relations teams in the private or public sector, each of which delivered consistently excellent work. One award will be made for teams of one to five employees and the other will be made for teams of more than six. The judges took into consideration the following factors, the number of employees within the team and the annual PR budget, the organization and its objectives, the team's communication objectives and strategy, the team performance and delivery within the available budget, and a summary of outstanding achievement and innovations. Now, before I send you off to find out who the winners are, please remember to tag a picture of yourself and take a picture of yourself and tag hashtag PR Awards 20. And over to you guys and best of luck. Thank you very much. There are two awards in this category. The first is for a communications team with up to five employees and the judges selected as the winner, the team that most strongly demonstrated the strategic value of the in-house communications team in driving organization objectives. The winning smaller in-house PR team of the year is Royal College of Surgeons Ireland, University of Medicine and Health Sciences. The second in-house PR team of the year is for a team of six or more employees. And here, the judges were impressed by a hardworking team that plays a pivotal role in achieving the organizational goals in a highly competitive sector. Trokra is the winner of the award for the larger in-house PR team of the year. Congratulations to everyone at RCSI, University of Medicine and Health Sciences, and everybody at Trokra. Mary. Thanks, Boric. So next, and the penultimate category is also new for the 2020 Awards for Excellence in Public Relations. It's the much-anticipated PRCA Agency of the Year Award. Two awards, actually, as there is one award for agencies with up to 10 employees and one award for agencies with 11 or more employees. So first, the PR agency category with up to 10 employees, where four agencies are shortlisted. We have Alice PR and Events, AM O'Sullivan PR, Hanover Media Strategy, and Limelight Communications. The judges noted that all these agencies are punching above their weight and delivering impressive work for international and local clients. However, they were unanimous in selecting the winning agency as the one that has stood out because of its national reach and local presence in successfully representing global brands. The first ever PRCA Agency of the Year with one to ten employees is AM O'Sullivan PR in Cork. And congratulations to Anne Maria O'Sullivan and her team. Now moving on to the category for agencies with 11 or more employees. Here again, there are four shortlisted agencies. Drury, Drury, Drury Porto Novelli, Edelman Ireland, Fleischmann Hilliard and Teneo. In their citation, the judges said that all of the agencies are very strong with impressive client portfolios. The winning agency particularly impressed the judges with its strong growth, focus on innovation and investment in its people. The award for the first ever PRCA Agency of the Year with over 11 employees goes to Edelman Ireland. Our congratulations to Joe Carmody, Carmody and the Edelman team in Ireland. We now have come to the final category of the afternoon, the Young Communications Professional of the Year sponsored by Cantor. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emer Faulkner and I'm the Managing Director of Cantor's Media Division. I firstly want to congratulate the whole PRI team for bringing us today's awards virtually. 
We're delighted here at Cantor to have an excuse to dress up for the occasion. The record volume of entries this year is testament to the strength and reputation of the PRCA awards in the industry to showcase the best of PR talent and campaigns. Cantor is proud to sponsor this year's Young Communications Professional of the Year Award to recognize excellence. And we see this in the high caliber of those who competed in the category and the finalists, Eamon, Fiona and Nicole. All three finalists already have demonstrated successful career paths in the communications industry, making valuable contributions to their clients across a range of sectors and disciplines, from consumer to corporate communications, government affairs and policy. The future is certainly bright with this exceptional talent. PR and communication professionals play a critical role for businesses and brands. During times of crisis, communication advisors are in high demand. And today we celebrate the role all three finalists have played during this especially challenging time. So I wish all the finalists the best of luck. Thanks, Emer. The judges were very pleased to see an increase in both the number of entrants and the quality of applications this year. They note that the calibre of the entrants provides great reassurance that the future of public relations profession is in very capable hands. There are three finalists shortlisted, Nicole Chazer of Taneo, Fiona Hanna of Diego, and Eamon Butler of Human, Law, sorry, Eamon Lawler of Hume Brophy. Before we announce the winner, let me read from the judges' citation. All of the finalists are very capable, hardworking, high achievers who are accredited themselves and their employees, employers. The winner of this award for 2020 greatly impressed each one of our jury from the onset because of their drive, breadth of experience and their contribution to public relations. As well as being hardworking and client-centered, they are strategic thinkers with a strong business acumen confident and self-aware, they're committed to lifelong learning. They displayed strong appreciation of the challenges and opportunities for the future of public relations and genuine passion and commitment to ensure public relations is center stage in the communi communication mix. Their commitment, experience and insights reassured the jury that this young professional will indeed be a future leader for a profession across Ireland and beyond. The winner of the Young Communications Professional of the Year title is Fiona Hannon. Congratulations, Fiona. Well deserved. So that brings us to the end of the presentation of, for the Awards for Excellence in Public Relations 2020. Congratulations to all of the finalists and the winners. And now I'll hand over to Martina for some final thoughts. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you to Mari, to Pori, to Nessa for covering all of that complex content so professionally. Thank you also to our sponsors joining us today, Cantar, Bennett Photography, Newport Media. Uh, we genuinely are very grateful for your support. And of course, congratulations to everybody who won today. I did tell you, you deserve to be very proud for getting onto that shortlist with all of that competition. I hope you enjoy the celebrations. Don't forget, hashtag PR Awards 20. I hear on the grapevine that we're already trending and long may that continue into the evening. Do share us your fun and celebrations. For myself, I'm going to join my very relieved team backstage, without whom none of this would have happened. And everybody on the team plays their part. So thank you very much and congratulations to Anya Sheehan, Anne-Marie Jordan, Dulloch Glynn, and especially to Frank Condon and Tom Hardy for their production of this presentation today. An award ceremony like no other, but still very enjoyable and continue on into the night. Thank you all very much. See you next year. <laughs>